Hey peeps, Jess here and I'm at the Burke Museum media opening. I am so excited. They left someone with a bachelor's in ecology into a museum. There's gonna be a food talk, I swear, but I am here to just geek the crud out and take you with me because they've got open windows to the prep labs and I am too excited by that. So let's go. As heads up folks, there will be some taxidermy and some bones in this video. So that's something you are squicked out by I will throw a link for other videos up above. And that's really what this is, this is about. Um, it's just um, honoring our ancestors and inspiring um, our uh, future generations and having the people between the ancestors and the future generations. This is our elders group that um, has worked with the staff to uh, make sure that we do uh, everything in a culturally appropriate way. So on behalf of the Swamish tribe, like we're welcome to hear. Trees were being cut down. The Native Americans were being pushed off of the land. The fish were disappearing. Birds were disappearing. So they began to collect things that they thought were disappearing. And they started a collection in 1885 and uh, they didn't really know what they were doing. And they hired a naturalist named Bug Johnson. Gotta love Bug. <laughs> so the vision for the new Burke was to allow everyone access that formerly only people on behind the scenes tours could get. So I'm dining with a mastodon today. That'll be a lovely partner. Oh dear, this smells very good. All right, what you all actually came here for, the food review. We've got two savory because I'm starving and I'm not doing this on an empty stomach. And then we've got four sweet to get through. I'm super excited about this first because this peep is braised bison. If you can see here, just, we've got pickled red onions, we've got looks like braised kale or chard, and that beautiful bison just looking amazing. Oh wow. Oh dear goodness. It's so tender. Oh my goodness. It just really gently spices, there's a lovely warming heat to it. It's like some of the best pot roast I've ever had. Next we have the Indian taco which I'm having flashbacks to undergrad because of this. So I feel like I'm back at junior year of college, up a cliff somewhere in South Dakota. It is just pure elevated nostalgia for me. You've got a slight heat from the beef, the cheese, the crispness of the lettuce, everything is what I expect to have in a fry bread taco. With some lovely fluffiness from the fry bread itself and that nice bit of crunch and picklingness from the pickled red onions, which do make it a lot more nice than what I ate when I was stuck in the middle of nowhere in South Dakota. I'll start with this yogurt parfait only because my brain is having issues with the idea of there being yogurt. It makes sense. Just, I'm wondering if it's Elenos because it's Seattle. That is decidedly not Elenos. It's a super soft, very delicate yogurt. There's a beautiful crunch. I think there's amaranth seeds in here and cranberry and pumpkin seeds and oats. Really nice and crunchy. I wish I'd had this for breakfast. Delightful. On to the fry bread. First lemon curd, because it's my favorite. The curd is lovely, not too tart, not too sweet. Really nice balance with a nice hit of lemon. Good combo there. Let's go for the blackberry jam. Super clean, super lovely. Sadly, this is a seasonal, but it will be around when they open. Last but not least, cinnamon sugar. This one feels the most like eating a donut. Super fluffy with a really nice coating of cinnamon sugar. It's exactly what you expect. It's like eating a donut. It's delicious. My favorites from this set, the bison, dear goodness yes, and the blackberry jam. Clearly though, I need to go back for seconds at opening. 
Clearly the museum is still working on their finishing touches, so take everything with a little grain of salt, but I'm really excited to go see stuff because, oh my goodness, I admit I am having huge issues of jealousy with this much space. When I worked in a museum, we did not have this kind of space. We didn't have multiple tables. I had maybe a quarter of this with four desks. Like, and the, and we have like actually good concrete so you can see where stuff falls. You do not understand how important it is to know where things fall until you have a piece of bone this big fall on the floor. So this, this whole space, this is amazing. Oh my goodness. So what I'm appreciating about the Burke is two things. One, there's definitely increased accessibility for everybody. Not only are we getting things like this log, which is actually for kids to play on once the museum is open, but there's a lot more things for just touch accessibility and it's going to be a more accessible museum for everyone, regardless of your physical limitations. And I am always in for that. Second thing, which is actually in many ways just as important, if not more important, given the history of museums, is the sheer amount of involvement of First Nations tribes with this museum. There are artists in residence. We've got a lot of research. We've got internships where students are learning how to make the tools that they would have had in their tribe and being able to bring them back to their tribe, people recreating things for the museum. This is truly a museum and tribe work of art together. And I think that is just awesome. I'm labeling tissues from a particular preparator. These are from birds from Arizona right now. Uh, this is a sap sucker. And what we're doing is taking the original vial that the preparator made when they were preparing the bird, and they put usually heart, liver, liver, and muscle in here. And they have their original notes, but we eventually upload all that data into a database. And so it's, much, it's not only much more complete and proofread, but then we assign a museum number to them. We need them to be really easily readable, um, especially by someone who's not an expert in the collection. I have a lot of volunteers who work for me. Yeah. And so when I have them subsample something for a loan, they can then see that and match up all of the numbers and the, and the genus species instead of that, which happens to be quite legible here, but yeah. often is almost illegible or has very little information. Bentwood boxes um, that you see here are um, made with one plank of cedar that has been steamed and bent on three of the corners and then the fourth corner is sewn. So the, the wood is yellow cedar. It's the silhouette of a uh, dorsal fin of a killer whale. And then the design on it, it's of uh, the Thunderbird. We have lots and lots of stories of how Thunderbird killer whale used to fight even help each other at times. <laughs> what do I think of the new Burke? I think this is a really cool new frontier in museum science. Editor Jess here. So once I got home, I found out that tickets are $22 for adults and $14 if you're a kid between the ages of four and 17. I wish it was cheaper. This is pretty normal for museum pricing. The main thing for me is it made me want to look at the memberships, which are actually pretty reasonably priced, and that might be the way to go to save money. They do have some nice ways to save money, but it is not a cheap outing. Moving on. There are more museums that have 
kind of behind the scenes things, but nothing at this scale. This is huge, ranging from visibility of wet labs to just what the science is going behind the scenes. And all of it is really nicely done. I am super excited to see how this ages. Also, in case you can't tell, this place is run by complete geeks, and I am all for that. And of course, since we're here for food, the food is exactly how I'd hoped. There will be another more thorough discussion of Off The Res. Today is here for the media preview, which again, thank you to the Burke and thank you to Off The Res for feeding me and letting me come by and crash this party. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll try and get them answered if I can. And if not, I will see you all next time. Laters.